Dr. Donald Klein is the alleged fertility Frankenstein. He's the physician sensationally accused of using his own sperm as many as 50 times in women who had no idea. It's a violation of us, and I don't think he realized that when he was using his sperm to impregnate us. Until last month, Julie, Matt, and Jacoba were total strangers. They could have run into one another on the street, at the store, or they may even have dated without ever knowing they might share the same biological father, Dr. Klein himself. You know, I think one of the scariest things is that the potential for unknown siblings to kind of hook up. And, you know, there, there are several of us that are in relatively close proximity to one another and are generally of the same age. That's, that's pretty scary, really, if you think about it. And I don't want my kids to possibly marry one of their first cousins or any of their, you know, distant relatives. Julie's mom, Diana, says she's still coming to grips with the revelations. We now know that he was the father of all our babies. And I mean, that's, it's just something that it's hard to comprehend. Matt reveals his deepest fear. He says when he and his wife had difficulty conceiving a child, they considered seeing Dr. Klein, a thought that he says now creeps him out. There is a very plausible possibility that we could have gone and seen him as our fertility specialist. If you found out your son was your half brother. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's recently crossed my mind. The secret might have died with a 77-year-old Dr. Klein if it wasn't for the hard-hitting reporting by our Indianapolis affiliate, WXIN. In an investigation that spanned more than a year and a half, Angela Gnote uncovered Dr. Klein's alleged fraud. First appearance in court today. Dr. Klein is accused of using his own sperm on his patients. When that report aired, it apparently upset the grandfatherly fertility doc. Uh, this is Dr. Klein. This is the shocking phone call from Dr. Klein to Jacoba. In this call, which she recorded, Klein admits he donated his own sperm on several occasions. You know, I thought I was doing the right thing. I only donated my own sample maybe nine or ten times. And it had to do with blood typing, and at the time, there was no sperm banks that I could refer the couples to. Klein then tells Jacoba his marriage is on thin ice and asks her to try to stop the TV station from reporting the allegations. Um, my wife and I, uh, after 57 years of marriage, um, have had a great deal of problems over this. She considers this adultery. Mm -hmm. I donated my sample. I'm going to lose my wife. Our marriage will be over. Can you help? Um, I mean, there's nothing I can do. I can't stop them from doing, you know, anything. It sounds to me like you're trying to do harm to me. I would not wish that upon anybody. I regret what I did. Yeah. But I can't go back and change it. One of my favorite scriptures was Jeremiah 1.5. Mm -hmm. If you'll remember, it says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. The most disturbing thing about this whole message is how he's trying to turn it back on you. He's trying to make you feel guilty for it. Mm -hmm. It makes me angry. You know, when he, when he brought up religion and was reading the Bible verse to you, I really was taken aback because what he was doing to you was exactly what my captors did to me. I mean, anytime they wanted to hurt me, anytime they wanted me to force me to do anything, he would pull out the Bible. I mean, because you can tell I tried to be nice. But for Jacoba, the time to be nice is over. Jacoba shared the recording with prosecutors. My 10 years of practicing law, I'd definitely put it in the top 10. 
According to the probable cause affidavit, Klein denied everything, telling investigators, I can emphatically say that at no time did I ever use my own sample for insemination, nor was I a donor. The state did an independent DNA test, which shows a 99.9997% probability he is Jacoba's biological father. Prosecutors concluded Klein lied to investigators. He was charged with two counts of obstruction of justice. He denied that he was the father uh, when, in fact, he was. We think that this sends a clear message that you don't lie uh, when you're confronted with an official investigation. We wanted to get Dr. Klein's side of the story, so Elizabeth tracked him down at his home. I'm on my way up to Dr. Klein's house to ask him some questions. Klein is retired and lives in seclusion in an estate at the end of this long driveway. Elizabeth Smart from Crime Watch Daily. Hi. Hi. I'm Elizabeth Smart. I'm from Crime Watch Daily. I had the opportunity to speak to a couple of your children, and I heard their side of the story, and I wondered if you wanted to share no, your side. No, thank you. You'll have to speak to my attorney. Oh, we tried to reach out to her. She wouldn't respond. Well, I can't do that. Don't you at least want to share a little bit? No, ma'am. You don't, you don't feel like you want to apologize? No, ma'am. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to share your side. Klein has pleaded not guilty to the charges. He reportedly has asked God for forgiveness. But for this half-brother and his half-sister, forgetting is something that isn't in their DNA. What would you like to say to Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein, tell the truth. Just tell the truth. DNA don't lie.